Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram, and in this video I'll be talking about what's new and improved in Reactor 6. For more Reactor content, please check out our website at adsrcourses.com. We've got tons of free Reactor stuff and much, much more. For those who do not build their own ensembles in Reactor, the most exciting part of this update is the Blocks Framework, which is a modular synth framework designed by the folks at Native Instruments. And this allows for users to create modular synths really easily. Um, I've got an hour of tutorials on these already, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about them here, other than to say that they come with some really high-end modules, um, components of some of the better reactor ensembles out there. So we've got stuff from Driver and from Monarch and from Rounds. And in addition, it comes with a template file that helps users build their own uh, modules for the Blocks framework. So this is really exciting. I think we're going to see a lot of really interesting stuff coming out of the Blocks framework in the next couple of weeks and months. For builders, there's a bunch of exciting new features, most prominently the table framework, which you can access in the built-in module section. The table framework allows us to um, drag and drop samples onto the reactor interface and then to use those samples to create our own sampling devices in Core. So Core has a new input type called table reference, which we can use to get data from primary into Core. So this is great and really opens up a lot of new functionality for um, samples and sampling control. In addition, many of the primary modules have been updated to include the table framework, such as the mouse area, which can now be used to drag and drop samples onto the reactor interface. In addition, we can save the um, samples that we've got loaded up by snapshot, which means that we can now have way more flexible sampling ensembles that don't rely on a single sample map in order to get our samples. Several aspects of the interface have improved and become more intuitive. For example, you can now click on the name of a module and type in a new name for it, which before was uh, you had to click on the module and then find the name field up in the properties window and click on that and it was just a substantially longer task so really small improvements like this can help out your workflow a lot. Another minor but welcome update to the interface is the wires look a lot better than they used to. Just a more modern design. Things don't look terrible when things aren't lined up perfectly etc. So that's a nice change. The text module has gotten some love as well. Um, in the View tab of Properties, you can now set the uh, font and size of the text, which is great. Oh, and the color as well. So this just allows you to create labels that are way more flexible than they were previously without resorting to Photoshop or whatever you're image editing software of choice is. So this is just great for quickly banging out an interface. Um, unfortunately, there's a, only a small selection of fonts available right now, but hopefully that'll increase in time. So that's some of the various improvements that have been made to interface and panel design in Reactor 6. Next, let's take a look at Core. Um, one of the first things you'll notice is there's a single option for adding a new core cell, which means that we no longer have a distinction between event core cells and audio core cells. So we can set the outputs to be either event or audio. And this is really helpful. It's definitely going to help push the core par paradigm further along. And as I mentioned earlier, there's the new table reference input 
as well. That allows you to get information from primary into core and is going to open up a lot of new possibilities for builders. In the built-in module section we have a few new menus available including bundles. The bundles are a special signal type that can carry a lot of different information on a single wire. So I've added a pack module and you can get inside of it by double clicking on it just like a macro. And the only thing you can create inside are new inputs. So here we'll be able to wire several different inputs and have them all being carried on a single wire. And you can even bundle together other bundles. And so we'll have all of this information traveling on a single wire, which can then be unpacked. And in order to get information out of an unpack module, the input of the pack module and the output of the unpack module have to have the same name. So we'll create several new outputs here and give them the same names as we gave the inputs to our pack modules. So A, B, C, and D. So the bundles are both a great improvement on the existing methods to get several signals on a single wire. And it also really helps improve ease of use for programming complex core projects. The other new core modules we have access to can be located in the scoped bus menu. And if we create a distribution, we can connect the distributor to a signal and give it a name. And then we can connect to that signal from any point inside this core cell simply by creating a new core macro and um, we'll give it something to attach to here. I'll choose the pickup distribution bus function and we type in the name of the bus. When we do, you see the bus itself, if it has a single connection, turns green. And if we type in an illegitimate name, then you'll see the text here will turn red and that will mean that we have not made an actual connection to an existing bus. The bundle and scoped bus modules um, both push Reactor closer towards something similar to traditional text-based programming. So for example, the bundles uh, give you access to something that's kind of similar to object-oriented code in text programming. And the scoped bus can be used to create global variables or constants, and that's also immensely useful um, in Reactor. So the last thing I wanted to mention is that the core library has been greatly improved. We've got a bunch of new filter types, um, including crossover filters and multi-notch filters. Um, we've got a whole toolkit for helping design zero delay feedback filters and a bunch of new math. For example, there's a bunch of complex math macros in here as well. Um, that allows you to use the new bundles to do complex math quickly and easily. So there's a lot of new stuff going on in here. And obviously I don't have time to go over it all right now, but I'll make an effort to create a video on that in the future. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram. Uh, for more of my work, please check out reactortutorials.com, and thanks for watching.